Good health to all from Rexall. Yes, it's Sunday. Time for the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, presented by the makers of Rexall Drug Products and your Rexall Family Druggist. Good evening. This is your Rexall Family Druggist, taking a little time from behind the prescription counter this Sunday evening to speak for all 10,000 of us. The 10,000 druggists who have added the word Rexall to our own store names. You can always tell us by the orange and blue Rexall sign in our windows. The sign means that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. They range all the way from aspirin to penicillin, and they're as fine and pure and dependable as science can make them. We recommend them to our customers because we know you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Titley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Scharf and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. Today, as we look in on the Harrises, Phil and Alice have just arrived at NBC for rehearsal of their radio program. Hey, we better hurry, Alice. We'll be late for rehearsal. I don't want to set a bad example for the guys in the band. You know, since we've got a new sponsor, those guys have changed. They've become gentlemen. <laughs> I haven't noticed any change in them. Well, I have, and I work with them. I laid the law down to them last week. I said, from now on, we ain't going to have any more horse playing or poker games at rehearsal. <laughs> for you, Phil. Well, we'd better get in or the boys will start playing without you. They can't start without me. Why not? I got the dice. <laughs> oh, Phil, the Rexall people aren't going to like that. You're in enough trouble with the company already. What trouble? Last week at their store, you insulted a customer and smashed every bottle on the perfume counter. Gosh, Phil, aren't you ever going to grow up? Why do you always get into trouble? I don't know. I guess it's just the Peter Pan in me. <laughs> to make things worse, when you cut your hand, you let Frankie sign your contract with the Rexall Drug Company. Well, how was I to know he'd sign his own name instead of mine? You know, Phil, with that contract, Frankie is now legally the star of the program. Oh, nonsense. <laughs> Frankie's probably forgotten about that contract already. You seem to forget that Frankie's my pal. He wouldn't try to take over. Don't worry about it. You'll see just as soon as we get into the studio. All right, quiet, you guys. Quiet! I've told you the whole story. That's why the sponsor insisted that I be the star of this show. <laughs> Hey, you mean you're in charge now, Remley? <laughs> Irrevocably. <laughs> From this moment forward, I am your leader. You are to accept my orders with unquestioning obedience. I am an absolute power. I am Remley. From now on, there'll be no more clowning. I want more respect than you showed to your former leader. <laughs> How's the trouble with him? He was nothing Don't but... you say nothing about our former leader. He was a great guy. You said it! He was our leader for 10 years and did a great job. We'll never forget him. No matter where he goes, we'll always have a soft spot in our hearts for good old... <laughs> hey, Artie, what was his name again? <laughs> It's Phil Harris. Don't feel sorry for him. He's still with us. I'm going to let him play the cymbals. <laughs> Just because I'm the star of the show don't mean I'd throw him out. He's my pal. 
What do you think I am, a heel? Heel, Henry, heel! That's Henry. enough, I don't know. <laughs> Now, uh, in line with the dignity of our new sponsor, you'll notice I made a few changes in the orchestra. I've added three new violins and a lady. Harpist. <laughs> And another thing, from now on, I'm going to do the singing. So let's go over my number. I'm singing, that's what I like about the South, but I'm changing the lyrics. <laughs> Why change it? Because they're corny. Won't you come with me to Alabama? Come and see my dear old mammy. She's boiling eggs and frying hammy, and that's what I like about the South. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Changing the lyrics to fit my personality and birthplace. <laughs> From now on, it goes like this. Won't you come with me to North Dakota? Come and see my dear old Moda. She's mixing me a scotch and soda. And that's what I like about the North. Yeah! <laughs> all right, now we'll try it that hold way. Hold it, hold it, all right, hold it. Okay, Remley, you can step down now. The maestro's here. I knew I should show up. <laughs> hey, Remley. <laughs> hey. Huh? That was a funny gag. You're signing your name to my contract last week. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> you, the star of the program. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a clip kid. <laughs> yeah. Ain't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, sit down and play the cymbals. I got a band to rehearse. <laughs> cymbals? Remley, listen to Please, me. Please, you're running me into overtime. <laughs> All right, fellas, one chorus of our new theme. That's what I like about North Dakota. Hey, wait a minute, Remley. I mean, you're not singing... That's what you like about what? <laughs> North Dakota. That's the last straw. Now get off of this stand. But Remley. my contract Get says down. <laughs> get off of here. Now look, I don't know what Remley told you guys, but I'm still the boss. I'm your leader. Highlation! Highlation! Why? <laughs> I don't want any more of that. Why does he keep calling me Isham? <laughs> All right, fellas, look. Now we're doing that's what I like about the South, and we're doing it my way. Hit it. Won't you come with me to Alabama? Let's go. Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! <laughs> Who smuggled Shep Fields into this? <laughs> That's the girl harpist I hired. Harpist? Lady, will you? Lady. Please, lady, will you take that screen door and get out of here? <laughs> Remley, I, I, I just don't know. What's the matter? <laughs> I can't understand you. At times, you remind me a little Willie. You mean Alice's brother? No, Willie Green. Now, Willie Green was from New Orleans and just as mean and selfish as he could be, just like you. He always wanted part of what somebody else had, but he didn't want to give nothing to you. And then one day, his mother baked him a jelly roll. Yeah, that's the best cake that was ever made. And then when Willie's little friends all gathered around and asked him for a piece, just like you, here's what little Willie said. I ain't gonna give nobody none of my jelly roll. I wouldn't give you a piece of cake to save your soul. My ma told me today, just before she went away, be a good little boy, I'll bring you a toy. I'm my mama's pride and joy. There ain't no need for you to keep on hanging round. I love you and I hate to turn you down. Now you kids are awful sweet But my jelly roll just can't be beat I know you want it, you craving for it But I ain't going to give you none I ain't going to give nobody none of this jelly roll I wouldn't give you a piece of cake to save your soul 
Cause my mom told me today Just before she went away Be a cute little boy, I'll bring you a toy I'm my mama's little Roy There ain't no need for you to keep on hanging round I love you and I hate to turn you down Now you kids are awful sweet But my jelly roll just can't be beat I know you want it, you craving for it But I ain't gonna give you now That was great, Phil. Shall I rehearse my song now? Oh, uh, don't bother, Alice. We won't have time for either one of you to sing. <laughs> what do you mean? As star of the show, I've decided to do a long guitar solo. <laughs> my lawyer says as long as I have that contract, it gives me the... Now, that does it. Give me back that contract, Remley, or I'll shake it up. Unhand me, you uncouth cymbal banger. <laughs> Stop searching me. You don't think I'm fool enough to carry the contract with me? I got it hidden safely away at home. Let me tell you something, Remley. You're not going to get away with this because... Oh, come on, Alice. Let's get out of here. That character, I'll break every bone in his body. <laughs> now, Phil. Phil, don't lose your temper. You won't get the contract back by antagonizing Frankie. You've got to use your head about this. No. I guess you're right. But to think my... My best friend would double-cross me. That's what hurts. <laughs> Isn't there anybody I can trust? Isn't there somebody that I can admire and respect? Good morning, Philip. <laughs> Willie, please, not now, Willie, not now. You better leave him alone, William. He's not in a very good mood. He has a problem that's getting him down. Why, Philip, I'm surprised at you letting problem get you down. I find problems stimulating. I believe in standing up to a weighty problem and defeating it. Or as a Chinese philosopher once said, he who wrestled with problem get toehold on adversity. Thank you, Anna May Wong. <laughs> Philip, uh, if you tell me your problem, I'm sure I can help you. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get out, will you, Willie? You can help, Willie. You see, Phil let Frankie sign his Rexall contract for him. And now Frankie has taken advantage of it and is taking over the show. And, well, well, Phil won't be on the air anymore. I see. But what's the problem? <laughs> if you're information wise guy, he's getting Alice off of the show, too. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta go and figure this out. Getting my sister off the show? Wait for me, Philip. Alice, I brought the children down. I thought we all might have lunch together. Oh, I'll take them to lunch. You go with Phil. Uh, wait, Philip. I'm coming with you. Poor Phil. This thing really has him down. I wish there was some way I could get that contract back from Frankie. Hello, Mommy. Hi, Mommy. Where'd Daddy go? Oh, he had business to attend to, children. He's got a problem that's bothering him. Can we help, Mommy? Oh, thanks, honey, but there's nothing you can do. You're just children and... Children? Say, maybe that's the way to do it. If I can appeal to Frankie's human side... Look, girls, here's what I want you to do. When Uncle Frankie comes out of NBC, we'll be standing here looking very sad. <laughs> Well, so long, fellas. Be on time for the show, Sunday. Okay, Frankie. See you Sunday, maestro. Yep. <laughs> ah, fine bunch of men I have working for me. Dum, dum, da, dum. Oh, I'm the star of Rexall. <laughs> and that's where I belong. <laughs> yes, sir. The... <laughs> there are bloodhounds following me? <laughs> oh, hello, Alice. Hello. Hi, kids. <laughs> what are you crying about? 
Alice, did you beat those poor kids? <laughs> Frankie, hmm? you ought to know why they're crying. It's what you did to their father. Yes, you beast, you scoundrel. You took our daddy's job. <coughs> well, I didn't really. I only... Uh... Gee, look, kids, with his talent, your daddy can get another job. What? <laughs> Well, he can go... He could work... F <laughs> They'd be glad to have him at... You got me. <laughs> Wait a minute. He's still working for Jack Benny. You know, there ain't no money connected to that job. <laughs> Left you? Naturally. He's a man. What else could he do? <laughs> no job. No future. He didn't want to burden us. He said he didn't want to live on my money. <laughs> what made him change his mind all this? <laughs> this is no laughing matter, Frankie. Do you realize that, that because of your having that contract, Phil has left us for good? And now... Now I don't have a husband, and the children don't have a father. <laughs> Cut it out, Alice. <laughs> oh, Frankie. Frankie, you're the only one who can make us a happy family again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess it's up to me to do the right thing. <laughs> Alice? Yes, Frankie? <laughs> How would you like to become Mrs. Remley? <laughs> I'd make a very good father to your children. Don't get hysterical, girls. I didn't say yes. I, I, all right, stop crying, kids. Alice, I'm not a homewrecker. If it means that much to you, I'll give you back the contract. Oh, Frankie, I knew you would. Come on, let's go over to your apartment and get well, it. Well, I haven't got it there. I just told that to Curly. I got it right here in my guitar case. <laughs> there you are. Oh, thanks, Frankie. You're a darling. You've made me happy. You've made the children happy. And when I tell Phil he's the star of the show again, he'll be happy, too. Yeah, but I'm not. <laughs> now I'm just a lousy guitar player again. <laughs> Goodbye, Alice. So long, kids. Goodbye, Frankie. Children, you were wonderful. <laughs> I've got to find your daddy and tell him the news. It's a great day for the Harrises. <laughs> it's a most unusual day. Feel like throwing my worries away. As an old native-born Californian would say, it's a most unusual day. There's a most unusual sky. Not a sign of a cloud passing by. And if I want to sing, throw my heart in the ring, it's a most unusual day. There are people Hello. meeting people. What do you know? There is sunshine everywhere. There are people Hello. greeting people. Goodbye. And the feeling of spring in the air. It's a most unusual time. Feeling my temperature climb. If my heart won't behave in the usual way, there's only one thing to say. It's a most unusual day. There is sunshine, yes, we mean sunshine. With apologies to Florida. There are people greeting people and the feeling of fall in the air. It's a most unusual time. I keep feeling my temperature climb. If my heart won't behave in the usual way, there's only one thing to say. It's, it's a most unusual, most, most unusual, most, most unusual day. Philip, 
I do not think we ought to break into Franklin's apartment. That's no way to solve your problem. Nobody's asking you. Now, Frankie said the contract is in his place, and I'm going to get it. Now, let's see. Remley's room is on the ground floor. Here it is. Now, look, I'll get down on my hands and knees, and you stand on my back so you can reach the window. Philip, I refuse to go through with this. Now, you can't back out. For once in my life, I need you. Well? Well, now, you listen to me. This contract means a lot of dough to me. I need your help. In that case, I will make a deal with you. If I help you, you are to make me your business manager at $100 per week. Did you major in blackmail at Harvard? <laughs> All right, it's a deal. Now, I'll get down on my knees and... What are you writing there? Putting our little deal on paper. Just sign here. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, come on, get up on my back. Very well. That's it. Now open that window quick. Now get in, Willie, and don't make any noise. Wow, what are the Bobsy twins up to now? <laughs> Julius, what are you doing in this alley? I got grocery customers here. Hey, you guys are trying to break in that apartment. I got a good mind to call the police. Now wait a minute, Julius. <laughs> don't do that. If they catch me, I'll get 20 years in the clink. You don't want that to happen to me, do you? <laughs> Look, Julius, if you don't care about me, think of Miss Faye. Now, if you call the police, my poor wife will be left all alone for 20 years. Help my ex-police! Julius! <laughs> now, don't do that. Please, kid, look, I'm not robbing anybody. Then what are you trying to sneak in that apartment for? I'm just going in to get my radio contract with Rexall. A likely story. I'm going to call a cop. You better hold it a minute, grocery boy. Now, you better get away from here. Getting this contract means a lot of money to me. Money? Mr. Harris, are you trying to buy me off? <laughs> are you insinuating that I'd be quiet for the sum of, say, $10? I didn't say nothing about giving you $10. <laughs> well, I heard somebody say it, and I accept. <laughs> All right, all right, then ten bucks, it's a deal. I'll mail it to you. Sign this, Philip. What is it? Your agreement with Julius. <laughs> That's my business manager that said that. Hand it to me. Here's the agreement, Julius. From now on, Mr. Harris agrees to pay you ten dollars a week. A week? I didn't... Julius, come back here. There's been a mistake. You wouldn't take advantage of me. You wouldn't take money every week for nothing, would you? Oh, that kid, I can't... Come on, Philip, give me a hand, and I'll help you through the window. Thanks. <clears throat> well, we're in at last. Now, let's find that contract before Frankie gets home. Shh, quiet now. We don't want the neighbors to hear us. I wonder where he has that contract. Could be in the dresser drawer. Or it could be in the sugar bowl. Yeah. It could be in his guitar case. That's where it was, but it ain't anymore. Frankie! <laughs> Yeah, Frankie. What are you guys doing in my apartment? Apartment? Yeah. Ain't this the Fairfax bus? <laughs> Curly, what are you doing breaking into my place? I got a right to break into it. I'm after my contract, and I ain't leaving till I get it, and I hand it over. Oh, well, you're too late, Curly. I already Look, get... Frankie, if you'll give me the contract, I'll make it worth your while. Now, I'll make a deal with you. Not yet, Willie. <laughs> We didn't even come to terms yet. Now, look, Frankie, if you'll hand over the contract, I'll give you $100 a week raise. But, Curly, you don't... I don't... Who don't? <laughs> I'll take it. Will you put that in writing? With Willie here, how can I help it? Sign here, Philip. There. Now, Remley, give me the contract and... Hey, it's Alice. Come on in, honey. Uh-oh. Oh, there you are, Phil. I thought you'd be here, and I've got wonderful news for you. Me too. I, I got, got the, the contract, contract back, back from Frankie. Frankie. <laughs> you got it? Yes, here it is. He gave it to me right after you left NBC. But I just gave him a hunt. Remley. <laughs> the master just left, sir. I'll tell him when he returns from Ninja. <laughs> 
Renly, you low down. Come on, Alice, let's get out of here. No, no, not until I thank Frankie. Frank, it was very noble of you to give up the contract for nothing. I appreciate it, and I'm going to see that you get more money on the show. You'll get a new deal. Willie, drop that pen! <laughs> Phil's troubles make us realize we all have our problems. Yes, even including Rexall's men of science. For instance, every so often they must invite a select group of bacteria to a special dinner and watch them while they eat it. Sounds strange, doesn't it? But drug compounds often contain such tiny amounts of some ingredients that they're almost impossible to measure. And that's when the Rexall scientists actually serve bacteria several course meal each course consisting of different amounts of the ingredient they wish to measure. You see, bacteria like human beings need certain things in order to live. And if those factors are present in the proper quantity, the bacteria will naturally grow and thrive. So, by the way these bacteria guests react to each course of this elaborate dinner, Rexall's men of science are able to determine whether or not the ingredient being measured is present in the formula in the proper quantity. Now, the free dinner for bacteria is just one example, of course, but any Rexall druggist will tell you that each of the 2,000 or more drug products made by Rexall gets the same kind of precise and painstaking testing. That's why when you ask us to recommend a brand, we just naturally answer, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. <laughs> Frankie. Yeah. Look, kid. What's the matter? Well, I want to uh, apologize for breaking into your apartment. Oh, that. Well, Alice told me that you gave her the contract, and, well, I'm sorry, Frank. I came back to thank you. Oh, it's nothing, Curly. Oh, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is. It's... <laughs> as long as you had that contract, you, you had me in a hole. Nonsense. Sure you had me in a hole. You could have become the star and made yourself a lot of money. Well, and I just want to say that it was very unselfish of you. Oh, I know. I guess I'm just a soft-hearted schnook. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye, Curly. Bye, pal. Hmm. Now, let's see. Where did I put the photostatic copy of that contract? <laughs> Mister, what's that sign in your window say? Rexall, Sonny. What is Rexall? Well, first of all, it's a family of fine, pure drug products. More than 2,000 of them made by the Rexall Drug Company, son. Rexall also means the only stores where you can buy these Rexall drug products. Oh! Watch for Rexall's big one-cent sale, October 20th through the 23rd. On those four days, you can buy two famous guaranteed Rexall products for the price of one plus one cent. Look for Rexall's big one cent sale at every store with the orange and blue Rexall sign in the window. This program was produced and directed by Paul Phillips. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis and Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Alice Fay appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. This is Bill Foreman wishing good health to all from Rexall. Sunday is fun day. Stay tuned to this station for the Edgar Bergen Charlie McCarthy show, which follows immediately. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.